Hey, this is John. We're out looking for natural tinder and things for a bird's nest. This tree that I came up to is um, white pine. The way you can tell, eastern white pine. So one, here in the east. And two, you uh, pine has uh, needles that are in a sheath. Now that's how you can tell the pines. And so what you want to do is you want to grab a clump of needles and then count the, on a white pine, there's five of them. Let me get one off here. Here is the sheath. And as you can see, there's five needles in there. Okay, so that determines this is a white pine. So, um, white pine needles are fantastic to use as bird nest material. So what you do is you go to the base of the tree and you just grab a handful of needles. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm spooking a lot of wildlife because I'm walking right into the sun. The whole time I've been walking west towards the setting sun and it's just blinding me. Uh, so I just spooked a couple of deer over there and when I crested this hill right down by that where those deadfalls are in the crotch of that tree right there a gray squirrel just ran up and over that so I'm not really I'm just out here having fun it's nice evening after work and I just thought I would um, show you some stuff that you can find for a bird nest um, when you're out hiking around so I'm just um, having fun not really looking for I'm, well basically I'm looking for whatever I can find <clears throat> I'm not seeing much wildlife because of the Sun but what I am seeing right in front of me here is a wild, uh, black cherry and you can see the burnt flake looking um, bark it has just like burnt corn flakes or something all right I'm gonna go down the steep embankment and look for some um, grapevine bark and um, see if I can find a cedar this is an example of American uh, horn beam and you see see how it's smooth and it looks muscly um, this is what I grew up calling ironwood and that's its nickname is ironwood it's also called muscle wood and you can see it's sort of muscly looking super hard doesn't get very big so they just use it for like handles and things that were uh, small stuff but you want something super hard but it's uh, American hornbeam coming up on the creek it's beautiful very beautiful out yeah. man has to show his presence everywhere we go Here's what I'm looking for, but I'm not going to swim out and get it. See that grapevine? Right there is a grapevine, and you can see, I'll zoom in on it, you can see the bark scrape, uh, just stripping off. That's a grapevine. Okay. But I'm going to find one that's not over the water. This is a place where I uh, have seen mink a couple of times. Well, one mink, not more than one, but a couple of times I saw one mink here.
here's another one. This is the one that I was wondering about before. See, it's got the hairy looking bark. And it doesn't get very big either. And this is called um, Eastern Hop Hornbeam. Eastern Hop Hornbeam. It's also nicknamed as Ironwood. Um, I think it's also, oh, Hairy Barked Ironwood is another nickname. Here's one that can fool you, and it did me for a while. This one has got the peeling bark, looks sort of like a birch, but it's actually a transitional phase of a um, black cherry. The young black cherry have shiny smooth bark with horizontal ridges like this, and then it gives way to um, the burnt um, bark later on when it gets older, but as you can see, it pe this bark's peeling off and it's leaving the other type of bark underneath it. So this peeled off bark uh, fooled me into thinking it was birch several times. This is a beautiful place and this is the area that I suspect the beaver lives over there somewhere under these blowdowns maybe right there or somewhere over in there but those are um, black willows and uh, I think it's made its home under there over on that other side but it comes over here and chews trees Probably chewed a lot of other places too. Now another spot you can get some tender is if you look and you see um, the stuff in these weeds. I mean, in these that's caught on these um, weeds, and what that is is um, dried. Um, aquatic vegetation it's right there it's dried aquatic vegetation but it catches at high water it catches in this stuff and then hangs out here and dries out so you can use this for bird nest too okay here's an example of northern white cedar and I'm going to set up and um, scrape some of this bark. This is the, the bark that you want to scrape. Use it. Scrape on the living tree. Right there. So what I'm going to do is set my camera up. And um, I'll scrape some of it off. And put it in a little bag. Okay, i got a plastic bag. I'm going to put it in. You gotta watch it doesn't blow away. Light, fluffy. And what I'm using, I'm not using my knife this time. I'm using um, a carbide scraper that I have at work because um, it's a lot faster. Because the vertical handle. I just happened to think of that while I was using my knife before. It was kind of... You have to scrape a lot. It tends to wear you out. And wear out your wrist. This is easy. This doesn't hurt the tree. It's um, a very outside layer. Give you a close up of what it looks like. It's just fluffy like a mouse nest. And here's a close up of what I'm using. Might not be able to find something like this, but this has got a carbide insert in it. And so. Um, 
it's designed as a scraper to scrape up. Uh, it's used to scrape rust and stuff off things, but it works great for something like this. All right, now we're looking for some other material. Okay, here's what I'm looking for. See the grapevines? Arched, the arched things. And then there's a bunch of them right here. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab this. Uh, see this? They're just flaking off. Which this is good for is to use as a backing plate for your bird's nest to help hold it together. So I'm gonna grab a bunch of this for the uh, backside of my bird's nest. I just had to take a picture of this. Look how huge this grapevine is. And I'll put my hand in here for size comparison. So this grapevine is probably, uh, let's see, look about six inches or more across. And at the base, it looks like a tree. But you see all this great stuff? That's what we're going to use for the back of our bird's nest. Okay, I gotta hurry because it's getting late. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to uh, get this going using a fire piston. And so here's some of the the uh, grapevine that I got. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this as a base plate. So I'm just gonna put this down. I can use, put this on the ground because it's going to be my base plate. So there's that. Now, I got my white pine needles. And cedar. out of that and I got some cedar here and a little bit of, I got some little bark I got a little bit of birch but um, I collected that birch um, before I had the camera out so since that was off camera I'm not going to use the birch. This is the cedar, some more cedar that I got. So I'm going to put that in here. That's going to be the base and the center of my nest. Okay, so it's grapevine, bark, white pine needles, and then uh, some cedar. The cedar is a coal extender. And I'm going to be using a fire piston. the fire piston okay. try to do this all on camera the fire piston I'm gonna take a little piece of uh, charred cotton rope just need a little tiny bit Okay, put it inside here, and then 
compress it. Take the other piece. Transfer the ember. Now it's glowing. Try to knock that piece in there too. go. Put the fire piston away. All right. Now we'll fold this back on itself sort of like a taco. Just like this. Glow. That in the cedar. Whoa. There we go. Those pine needles are a little damp. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and put it out because I have to get going. But I hope that was informative for you. Till we meet again, God bless. I just wanted to uh, show you this. I've packed all my stuff up and uh, that's still burning real well. And the reason why is because the um, grapevine bark burns really well and it's more woody. So you can, uh, once that gets going, you've got tons of time to pick up other wood to start your, uh, to build your fire with.